In this video, we're going to try and find the limit of this sequence as n tends to infinity. So to do this, let's let's just look at this bit. So to do this, let's just look at this bit. So um, so n factorial is is really n times uh, n minus one times n minus two and so on times two times one. Um, n fact uh, n to the power of n would be n times n times n times n and so on. So uh, so let's 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 just break this up into separate fractions. So this bit here is this fraction here. So this so so you've got this fraction multiplying with this fraction, which is this one here, and then here, here you're multiplying with another fraction and so on. So here you've got another fraction here, and then uh, and then and then here you've got another fraction here. So realize realize that this number here, realize that n to the n take away one over n will be less than one. So this fraction here is actually less than one because if you if you look at it, uh, seven over seven, which is which is similar to this, this here will be the number of one. But then if if you have one less, n minus one, so it will be six over seven. So here the denominator, this, sorry, the numerator will be smaller than the denominator, meaning that this fraction must be less than one. Meaning that this fraction here must be less than one. And then and then here. Um, you, you, so here, if you have 7 over 7, in this case it would be 7 take away 2, so that would be 5. Uh, and then this fraction here would be even smaller than this one here, but it's less than, it's, it's less than 1. So, so you've got, you've got less than 1, times less than 1, times less than 1, so it's like me giving you something like this, 0 0.9 times a number that's smaller than 1, let's say 0 0.8 times 0 0.73 times 0 0.69 and so on. You've got this thing, a number less than 1, times a number less than 1, times a number less than 1, times a number less than 1. It's just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So uh, so, so this number here is 1 times, let's, uh, let's imagine this to be 0 0.9. So 1 times 0 0.9 is still going to be 0 0.9. So, um, so, so this, this, hang on, this times this would be less than one, times this would be less than one, times this would be less than one, times this would be less than one. So you've got this whole thing here, which is going to be less than one, times this thing here. So, so, so let's imagine this whole thing here to be, let's, let's just imagine it to be 0 0.63, say, and then times this thing here, times this thing here. Well, this whole thing collectively will be less than or equal to 1 over n. So, so, so we can say that this whole thing here will be less than or, or equal to 1 over n. So this whole thing here will be less than or equal to 1 over n. So, so this thing here is less than or equal to 1 over n. So we can do this. Hang on. So we know, we know that this thing here is what we're, what we're looking at. Is less than or equal to one over n. Now, if if you look at if you look at this, when n equals one, it will be one factorial over uh, over one to the power of one, which which will be one over one, which will be one. So so uh, and then anything beyond this, well, if you look at n equals two, n equals two, well, it will be two uh, times one, two factorial uh, over two uh, squared meaning 2 times 2. The, the, the point here is that this thing here is going to be bigger than 1. So, so when, n, when n equals 1, we, we, we know it equals 1. But then anything beyond, when n is bigger than 1, it's going to be above 0. It's going to be above 0. So we know this thing will be less than or equal to 1 over n, but it, it has to be always be bigger than 0. So now, now we've trapped this between two things. So now take the limit of all three. So take the limit of this, take the limit of this, take the limit of this, as n tends to infinity, as n tends to infinity, as n tends to infinity. That will then give you this. So, um, so, so, so we don't know what this limit is, but we do know that this limit will head towards zero. We, we don't know what this what thing is doing, but we do know that this thing, the limit of this thing as n tends to zero, of zero, will be zero. So, so, um, so we don't know what this is, what this thing is doing, but we know that it's trapped, uh, somewhere in between here, in between zero and zero. That means this will have no choice but to have a limit of zero.
So it's basically us using the squeeze theorem. So the uh, so the limit of this as n tends to infinity is actually zero because because this thing is trapped in between zero and zero, so it must be zero. So the limit of this thing equals zero. Okay.